Now, ex-presidential candidate Adamu Garba urges the All Progressives Congress ABC to postpone the party's convention to avoid implosion. And again, Nigeria drops in latest transparency into national corruption, Rankin. This is Plus Politics, and I am Justin Akadonye. An APC chief said an ex-presidential candidate in the 2019 general elections, Adamu Garba II, has asked the leadership of the party to postpone the party's convention scheduled to hold on February the 26th this year, saying going ahead with it could lead to implosion. He said the exercise should not take place until warring factions within the party resolve their differences. Now discussing with me is the ex-presidential candidate and the CEO of IPI Solutions, Adamu Garba II. Many thanks for joining us on the show this evening. Thank you very much, Justin. Yeah, it is our pleasure. Let's just dive into uh, you know, the issue for the day, and specifically you're calling for the suspension of the APCism convention. What exactly are your reasons? Yeah, my reason um, has to do with... Uh, the confusion that came about after state congresses was conducted. You know, we had uh, um, last year from June upward, we had these state congresses where we produce state leaders in the party, uh, in state, state leadership of the party in each state. And suddenly, there are so many factions that emerge, each of them struggling to legitimize themselves as the authentic and duly elected members of APC in such state, especially the executive leadership. In most of these states, about 14 of these states, we have parallel leadership, whereby you have different chairmen, at least two, contesting for the same chairmanship position. And as I'm talking to you right now, the same situation still prevails, where we have series of questions in different states of the Federation asking about um, uh, contesting for their legitimacy in the APC. So if you have this kind of situation and you organize a national convention where you are expecting all these chunks to come into the convention ground, with how are you going to legitimize or what, what, what mechanism are you going to use to legitimize or to determine which of the faction is actually the legitimate one? And in a party politics, you don't want to lose a single member if you legitimize Chairman A, what do you think the feeling will, of Chairman B will be? Maybe Chairman B may decide to say he's leaving the party and we are losing. So there are a lot of problems and crises within the party structure as a result of the last convention, the conven uh, state congresses that was held. And therefore, there is need for ample time for deep level and high level reconciliation meetings across all these state structures where we have issues to come on board, reconcile their differences, so that each state we can understand this is the legitimate chairman, so that when we come to the convention ground, it will be an easy ride and a very unified convention. But as our current, if we decide to do that, it's going to be a very serious problem because in it, most of the states, there are even legal cases that are registered between the two contestants. This guy will believe he's a legitimate person and he will rush to the court to seek legitimacy and the other one will rush to the court. That means there are pending court cases across most of these states. And even the legitimacy of the CECPC itself, the Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, is contested by some agreed members. Even though we know that the CECPC was appointed by the president, commander-in-chief of the armed forces, who is the party leader, he nominated them after the disbandment of the previous executive committee of the party. Now, some people are contesting for their legitimacy. So this contest is still hanging in, court, uh, in, in courts. So imagine if perhaps maybe we did convention and one of the court cases came out and they legitimized the CECPC, what is going to be the position of the hitherto elected members of the party afterward? So that's a very serious problem. We have a lot of issues that have to do with politics, that have to do with legal 
that have to do with so many issues that until we have ample time to move around and reconcile these differences, I don't see it very um, necessary for us to rush into convention when we know that we're having a divided party. In fact, even if we come into convention, who is going to be the party chairman in for perhaps maybe Zamfara State? Because in Zamfara State, we don't have a party chairman. There is no Congress that was conducted there. Mm. We don't have Congress that is conducted in, in Anambra State. After producing um, in, uh, Andy Uba as party chairman, what came back later? No party chairman. Simply because there is no executive committee within the state that nominated him as a legitimate uh, candidate of the party to participate in the last state. So imagine if, if he has won that election, by now we will have lost this we had with Zamfara State. All right. So it's a serious issue, and we believe that we have to postpone this convention until all these issues are sorted out properly. Let's talk about these issues from your you know from your opening and your uh, from all that you have said so far, you have been able to identify that there are at least uh, 14 states uh, that have, uh, you know, you know, uh, factions um, brewing among themselves. If I may ask, if you would answer me, really, you know, how did all of this, you know, wound this down? Or how come the APC, uh, which, you know, have been adjudged as the, you know, one of the most, uh, you know, formidable um, uh, parties in Nigeria, uh, is now actually, you know, at this particular stage where they cannot actually hold themselves as one body? Yes, the problem is, you know, APC is a convergence of different political parties. If you could recall, we have AMPP, CC, CPC, AAM, ACN, and APGA that came together to form what we now see as APC. So now that we have a transiting president who was the central unifying figure that brought about this merger to produce this mega party called APC, is now transiting out or his tenure is going to expire in 2023. So there is need for a new uh, leadership that, will, that is expected to substitute the president normally in democracy. But the problem is different camps between the CPC, the AMP, the AMPP, the ACN, and co, all of them are struggling to be the president. You can see Ashua Agua the clan, who is from ACN block. You have uh, um, Oju Zokalu and uh, who declared, who was from PDP block, the new PDP block, and we also had uh, Okorocha today declaring who is from Abga block. So different factions want to have the control of the party after the exit of President Muhammad Wani, and that's where the problem is. But didn't the so APC... Different factions... Let me just uh, put this in edgewise. Yeah, right. Didn't did the APC uh, see all of this coming? You know, over time, people have described the APC as a marriage of um, different, uh, you know, wives uh, all living together in one house. But over time, if you have all of this, uh, you know, divergent interest, uh, over the years, uh, shouldn't the party have been able to, you know, you know, reconcile all fact or factions and and make sure that they get some sort of interest that at the end of the day, you know, the national interest of the party actually stays. You are completely right. You see, that is why my advocacy about the suspension of the convention makes sense. Why? Because we need to have a very solid and strong reconciliation committee, a very serious conflict, internal conflict resolution mechanism that needs to be established because when you have a merger, it's like talking about having different factions coming together. Prior to that coming together, they were all um, uh, in opposition to one another. And suddenly they come together. Something was born to them. Something was binding them together. And that thing is continuous conflict resolution mechanism, you know, that will ensure and guarantee everybody's interest is properly protected. But that was not instituted because of the crisis that the party keep having. If you remember this chairman that we had currently, uh, His Excellency Ibrahim Malabuni, the governor of, um, of, uh, Yobe State. of Yobe State, who is the chairman of the extraordinary committee, he is the top chairman of the party. We have, uh, in fact, there is even a founding uh, chairman of the party who is like uh, B.C. Akande. Then we now have Oyegu, who is the first chairman of the party. We now have Adam Voshomole, and now we have him, that my Mala. So there is different crisis simply because the party had not established a very strong conflict mechanism, uh, resolution mechanism over time. But now that we are coming into convention, and we know the consequences of losing power because we have seen what happened, what is happening currently to 
PDP that has transformed from Africa's largest party to Africa's Jamboree party. Because they are nothing now. We should also take lesson from there. Now that we have chairman of the party, extraordinary convention committee, that is able to provide some level of stability over a period of more than one year, it is important for us to leverage on this opportunity to create a solid conflict resolution mechanism that can move around and conciliate each and every member based on the block that brought them into the APC so that we can have a very strong united party that we go into convention. In fact, it does not even make sense for us to go into convention to contest because sometimes contestation could bring about problem. It is important for us to get into convention on consensus ground whereby we know who is going to emerge in each of the party positions because it was agreed, negotiated, and discussed about. But currently, with, this, with, with the constitution of the party where we have factions in each state that used to belong to different political parties, fighting one another over the control of the party in those states, coming into convention ground again, I think we are going to just explore the problem to a national level. And we shouldn't do that. Like, you look at what is happening in Kano, for instance. Malan Shekarou and Ganduje belong to different political parties. Mm. Malan Shekarou came from NPP block and Ganduje came from PDP block. Now that President Wari is exiting, Malan Shekarou has his loyalty different from Ganduje. Ganduje is thinking of one person to succeed as the president to succeed President Muhammad Buhari, while Malan Shekarou is suspecting somebody else to succeed President Muhammad Buhari. And with these differences, you now have different factions to support their own imagined candidates. So that is the situation that is happening across the state. We have the same situation in Oyo yeah. State. We have the same situation in Oshun State. We have the same situation in Gombe State. We have the same situation in Kwara. We have the same situation in many states in Nigeria in, uh, where APC, uh, APC is, is the ruling party. So we need to really, really pay serious attention to make sure we resolve this problem before we get into convention. All right, now, but then again, um, Adam, um, have you been able to reach um, out to the leadership of the party so far to uh, maybe convince them on the need to postpone this party? And what are the feelings that you are getting? Yes, so far, we have um, done a lot of advocacy. We have written to the party. We have written to pages of newspapers so that the general members of the party across the country can know. All of them are reading papers. They are reading national dailies. I'm sure they are watching Plus TV. So with all these things, they will be able to understand that there's agitation within the party. As I'm talking to you, there are so many members of the party that are also having the same feeling as I'm having now. So with this, especially us that knows more any other party other than the APC, I always say that I jumped from PDP to join APC. So I don't know any ACN, CPC, MPP, whatever. All I know is APC. So with this, we have to protect the interest of the party first. So we are doing that, we are doing advocacy, we are creating awareness as much as possible. The dangers that, is, that we are facing if we go into convention as a divided house. Because we had similar problem with PDP during the run of the 2015 election. When PDP decided to host convention and there are so many governors that decided to judge some PDP right on the convention ground. And that brought about the failure of PDP. So we cannot give PDP the same opportunity they gave us that time. We should be more mature and more organized. So we continue to do this. We are even looking at organizing members nationally, you know, so that we can march to the party secretariat and notify the chairman of the Kiatika Extraordinary Convention, uh, Convention Committee, His Excellency Mai Malabuni, and the National Executive Committee that has consulted as Kiatika to kindly consider postponing this, this convention, this upcoming convention, so that they have ample time to be able to resolve this problem. Maybe having additional three or four months to be able to consolidate these differences so that when we go into our convention, we will emerge stronger and face the opposition and win power in 2023. All right, let's still talk about um, you know, the reconciliation processes that have been going on so far in the APC. How would you say uh, the Bonilla, the CCEPC, have, you know, you know, has gone uh, so far in reconciling all uh, uh, factions? Because right now we still have 14 you know, states that you have uh, mentioned so far. Would you really say um, they're actually making ground or covering ground, as it were? I think the extraordinary, the, the reconciliation committee that was constituted 
um, did not, uh, it, it, is, it, is a, uh, it was a very good um, attempt uh, under the distinguished leadership of Senator Abdullahi Adamu of Nasarawa State. But unfortunately, I think we didn't do a good job. Maybe we may have consolation in Lagos State, because in Lagos you have the Moise Banire faction and the Ashiwaju faction. So I think that faction now is sorted. Maybe that's the only place I can count a positive. Gombe State, there are still strong effort to see that the um, uh, Nanjuma Gwoje faction and the current governor, Governor Inuaya, his excellency Governor Inuaya, his faction, sorted the problem. But as I'm telling you in Gombe State, we are losing members to PDP. So many people are just moving back to PDP simply because they don't see the possibility of that kind of resolution. And they are trying to go back to their traditional zone because Goje was coming from PDP to APC. So they are trying to move back to the previous party. And this is a great loss to us. And Malam Ibrahim Shekarau and the Ganduja's faction, I saw them, I think, yesterday to see my Malabuni. And there were some good press statements. But I'm not sure that this press statement is anything to run over because based on the information I have from the people that went there, there are still so many gray areas that are yet to address, need to be addressed. So if the faction will have to come to see my Malabuni at the center, so it means that there is still a problem. So when you look at it, in fact, if you go to Delta State, for instance, DSP or Deputy Senate President, uh, Omo Ajege, and the faction that is for uh, the Minister and Greg Agoro, I have a very serious problem. In fact, they don't even see eye to eye. So how do you say with this kind of outcome that we have a very strong resolution that can be able to convey us into successful convention? Well, Adamo, I want us so to talk about... Yeah, sorry to bother that. Right. I, still, I want us to talk about uh, what you said in passing, you know, the meeting between Shekara and, of course, um, Ganduji. That's uh, the issues in uh, and Kano State. And you said there are still gray areas to be addressed in that particular state. Can you uh, bring us up to sit specifically on these gray areas that you just talked about? Yeah, the gray areas is that we still have pending court cases that all, some of the warring parties took to the court. And we still don't know, even though there are some letters that are just flying online that says that uh, Anzago faction is a duly recognized faction of the party, you know, by, by the party. The Ganduja section is still contesting it under uh, um, uh, Alaji Abbas. So when you look at this, the Alaji Abbas faction did not come out and accept Anzago as the duly elected chairman of the APC, and that faction now is the faction that is organized by the APC. Until there is a strong press statement from the Ganduja faction that has accepted the Danzago faction, there are still very much gray areas. So if there is a resolution, you should have faction A supporting faction B, or faction B supporting faction A, then you now know that you have reached a Mukabu resolution. But so far, there are still issues. All right. Although sometime last year, specifically in December, we had here on PLUS TV, uh, we had some members of the APC Youth uh, Development and Solidarity uh, Forum, and they had talked about um, organizing a parallel convention uh, come uh, February 26 uh, this year because they said they're not really happy with the way uh, things are going on in the APC, specifically, you know, the young people, that's the youth, um, being carried along, you know, in the decision-making process in the APC. So I want you to react to that. Yes, actually, I am aware of the faction of the group of youth that, that felt disenfranchised by the party and that decided to form a, a committee as a pressure group to pressure the party to do the right thing. Very fantastic in democracy. And I, I think I'm a little bit in one of their two meetings, you know, uh, when, when it started, personally. But again, uh, creating a parallel faction now goes against the principles of the establishment of the party and even the constitution of the party. The party must have one chairman and it must be established through legitimate angle. A situation whereby the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari's GCFR, who is the party leader, decided to appoint a caretaker extraordinary convention planning committee to steer the party to a successful convention. I do not think Nigerians or any party member should accept any person as a parallel member to be able to conduct anything called parallel convention. That's somewhat like a reasonable uh, attempt to divide the party further than to seek legitimacy to make it better. The best way, as we young people, I know that all of us young people are actually 
not getting the right attention in the party. And that is why personally, I'm even making this advocacy of shifting the convention so that even our own interests as young people can be properly negotiated in the party. The best solution that young people can do is to be pressure group within the party. You don't have to go outside the party and begin to pressure the party by creating a parallel party structure, a situation whereby somebody decided to appoint himself chairman of APC, who will now who assumed constitutional responsibility, according to that person, to conduct parallel congress outside the established party structure. That to me is a destructive attempt at the party than even making it better. The best right. solution is to stay within the party and do the right thing and obey Mr. President because he is the leader of the country and God willing, he is the party leader because the party that brought him to power is the party that is having the problem and is the president that attempt to solve the problem by appointing this caretaker committee. So it right. is our responsibility to support the caretaker committee to deliver the right thing. But at the same time, if we are not comfortable with what is happening, we should advocate until that thing that we want is done to the betterment of all party members, not to go from outside the window and begin to say we are going to set up a parallel convention. If we do that, we are actually destroying the party much more than we united. So right. I don't buy into that idea. I think it's too, it's too, um, it's, it's too shallow and that uh, we should stop this kind of thing and pay attention to supporting the party to deliver a very united convention. I think now the party don't need more divisions. What we need is unity and strength. So that when we go into convention, we'll go strongly and win election. Party uh, uh, or election time is a warfare time. I'm glad you mentioned, I'm warfare. glad you mentioned so election you time. You are divided commanders to the war front. Mm. I'm glad you have mentioned it's election time because, of course, uh, we are preparing for a general election to come next year. And even there are elections uh, for this year and some primaries are going to be held. So AKT is one in mind. But let's talk about um, the chances of the APC going uh, by all of this that we are saying, the issues of um, postponement of convention over time, the issue of um, disunity, you know, and um, this enfranchisement of some young people. So don't you think all of this may affect the chances of the APC ahead of the 20? 23 elections. That is actually why we are advocating for a very strong conflict resolution mechanism that will bring everybody on board, mainstream every member of the party, so that if we get into that convention, we should be able to show Nigerians we are united and stronger together. But if you go this convention with immature planning, just because some people are pressuring that the convention should be held and we jumped into it. And then you know how factions decided to jettison, jettison the convention and pull out of the party right on the convention ground. Our chances of winning the 2023 election will be magical, will be a mystery. And it is, it is not good for you to go to war front imagining or hoping to win. You must go to war front ensuring that you have all the arsenals necessarily required to be able to bring down your enemy. And... Uh, the, the opposition is always supposed to be losing for a very stronger force that is united. But the situation whereby we get into convention and we have implosion, so many members are going to leave the party, weakening the strength of the party, thereby giving advantage to the opposition. And most people that understand the value of hosting political power in the party if they lose this election, if APC eventually lost this election in 2023, what we see PDP is facing today, APC's case is going to be very worse, very much worse. Because in APC case, everybody will go into their own individual hearts, the way they used to be, and begin to contest for power at the very small level, the regional level, if not altogether disappearing. Mm -hmm. So the best solution is to all bury our egos, come together, as a united members of the party, so that we can win this 2023 election. But if this convention implodes, All right. if this convention implodes, I'm telling you that our chances of winning 2023 election will be a mystery. And that should never happen if we truly are genuine 
and patriotic members of the party and want the success for the party. Well, thank you, Adamo. Uh, indeed, uh, we just um, hope that um, the APC as a party will be able to put um, its house in order and ensure that um, all members are actually carried along. Thank you so much uh, yet again for your time, and we do appreciate it. We were joined by Adamo Garba, uh, former presidential candidate in the 2019 election, and he is the CEO of IPI Solutions. Thank you again, uh, Adamo Garba, for joining us on this particular discourse. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. All right, so there's T Plus Politics and Plus TV Africa. We'll take a short break now. And when we reach here, we'll look at Nigeria's ranking and the 2021 Corruption Perceptions Index in a moment to join us again.